welcome to the second episode of this, this podcast thing I decided I wanted to start doing now because I just decide things like that. Um, hi, um, I said I was going to do the video about talking about resentment and stuff like that, and I do want to do it, but this one I thought it would be just on, it was on the top of my dome and I just really want to fucking talk about it and I've been like in like it's literally I have these thoughts sometimes where like it'll just rotate and rotate and rotate and rotate and rotate and it's the only thing I can think about and so I just wanted to talk about this because yes and also I've been I think my algorithm can tell that I'm thinking about this because oh my god I'm starting to get new vloggers that are like I'm in my late 20s starting over i'm in my late 20s and having a crisis so it is starting to give me content that i want more because although i love the la girlies that spend like a billion dollars at erewhon that is not my vibe you know so i'm just gonna yeah we're just gonna talk about crisis in your late 20s i guess well no um this one i want I, I i am also gonna talk about that but i wanted to talk about feeling like a failure in your late 20s because Honestly, I'm 28, and it feels weird to be like, I'm 28, because literally for, like, what, like, five, six years in my 20s, which is, like, my early 20s, I literally was in a relationship, right? And so, I feel like, not that it's, like, not that it's over, it feels like I lost, like, five, six years of my life, because he provided for me, which is nice and great, and, like, a lot of people would love that, but because he provided for me, I did not really work or do anything, so I feel like I just lost moments of my life and also I didn't I feel like I didn't gain the things I was supposed to gain in my early 20s and now that I'm learning it now like I said I was talking about being a late bloomer in the last episode I it's such a weird experience it's so weird because there are things that people expect me to know and do and have done but I haven't because I was just I was taken care of which is nice again but like that's so why I never learned basic life skills like literally by the end of a relationship he was like, I wish you would grow up, and I wish you would do this and do that. And I'm like, well, I've never experienced those things. So, like, I'm stuck at my 21-year-old thoughts when I met this person, you know? Like, it sounds crazy, but, like, you can get really stuck in, like, an age. And, like, people say that that happens with celebrities a lot because celebrities don't really necessarily have to grow or adapt once they are celebrities and they make money because everyone will do things for you. So I'm sick, <laughs> and I am like... <laughs> So you might, if you hear sniffling, it's because I'm sort of sick. But yeah, so yeah, like celebrities get stuck doing that because they literally don't grow. Because like apparently, and I don't know this, but like it makes sense. They're saying like when you're a celebrity, your main thing is just to be a celebrity. Your main thing is just to act and just focus on being good at acting because that is what people are making money off of you, like your agents and things like that. And so then, like, they, like, people get stuck. It's, like, you see, like, influencers get stuck in a certain age group or, like, will do, like, videos that are catered towards, like, younger teens or, like, just teens after being, like, 25, 26. And that's why, because you're, like, mentally stuck in that age. And it's, like, such a weird thing to be mentally stuck. And, like, I feel, like, I'm trying, I'm, I'm now feeling, like, when I'm becoming myself and, or whatever myself as an adult is because I did not know who I was as an adult whatsoever um a lot of my hobbies and a lot of my things i like doing are very childish things i like anime and i like collecting stuffed animals and toys and so i don't really know who i was as an adult and not saying that like those things are not adult things because you can enjoy things and like things okay like that's not say that people can't have hobbies i'm saying that like i don't i, I, just, I just don't i don't know what i like like i don't know what the fuck i like um like that's not just going out because here's the thing a lot of it sounds really crazy or dumb but and as someone who has who is not actively an alcoholic right now but is an alcoholic i can say this we tend to say that adult hobbies are drinking and going out and partying and i do love those things those are really really fun things but i stopped doing it because it was not productive to my life and because i am an addict it's not just like it's not just this fun, easy thing that you do, right? Like, and, like, no one else wants to admit that, like, things like that are problems, especially, like, to addicts, because, like, I knew I was an addict pretty, like, not, maybe, like, a few years into my addiction, I probably knew I was an addict, and, like, when I would get too drunk, and I would tell my partner, my, my ex, that, like, I don't like myself, I kind of want to quit drinking, and, like, he would say, like, if you stop drinking, I don't want to be with you. I, if you don't want to party anymore, I don't want to be with you. And, like, 
that is like a cut count like a, I don't know what the English word is like a selling point or a point that people hold on to because like it's important to people right like it's it's very important to people that you go out and you drink especially if like your partner goes out and drinks you have to like find that like that's why like being like the especially last year when I was trying to get sober like really trying to get sober it was such a hard thing I felt like I couldn't do anything I couldn't hang out with people and now I don't really hang out with those people anyway so it doesn't really matter but like honestly it was such a rough thing to want to go sober because people weren't necessarily like supportive and like that can keep you stuck in a mindset like if you're partying and drinking and not doing anything you're not growing you're not doing anything it's kind of toxic you know like but like you have to be out of it to know but like to get out of it honestly the way I got out of of it is I had a few bad experiences in December and it just made me not want to drink as much and it made me really re like think about my life and like think like oh and my tooth breaking because I like broke my tooth um has really made me made me reconsider life and I'm like this this is what I want my life to be and the answer is no like I don't want my life to be this I don't want to be drunk all the time and also I was texting my boyfriend afterwards and be like I hate that I'm a drunk like and when you start doing that which and I know this is like me talking about my late 20s and that's not really have to do with my late 20s actually but because all of my 20s I've been an addict like not and I'm not saying I'm not an addict now I think you're forever like I, people have talked about this in AA and things like that you're forever an addict and I, I believe that I'm forever gonna be an addict but I am not actively an addict right now like I do drink sometimes because I don't stop myself drinking I notice when I try to go cold turkey sober it does not work for me because I'm like oh, I want to do it 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 that like it like I, just, I really need to do this that like it freaks me out that <laughs> I'm not drinking but like if I'm like oh here's one drink I'm good like or a beer or whatever like I had like a pregnancy scare maybe like a month or two ago and that was also the second point where like I need to stop drinking so much like because I was still drinking like less than I was December right but like I was still drinking and I realized like I like like it goes back to like do I want this life and I don't want that life so I like quit drinking when I thought I was pregnant I wasn't pregnant and then afterwards I'm like I maybe should just not drink hard liquor as much anymore because I wasn't doing like that like while I felt more like after I quit just drinking I felt more like energized I felt like I was doing better I felt like I wasn't hungover all the time and like that literally made me be like okay let me just switch to soft liquor or like even like you know what I mean like wine and beer or when I want to drink like when I want to do like hard liquor just doing it because my problem is if I tell myself I can't do it I can't do it I'm not supposed to do it you're gonna do it like it's just like you're gonna fuck yourself over and I just didn't want to do that anymore and like this time I think this is the best also I'm not in the party scene anymore that also helps because getting no honestly being in the party scene literally stunts your growth as much as I love partying and drinking and raving and the the party flavors and stuff um I'm gonna be I'm I'm gonna be honest like people go out and do that it's very part of the culture um and it's fun and it's exciting and it's I not always but I have a lot of bad experiences too but like you don't grow like those like I and I noticed and I was seeing that like by the end of those friendships like last year I lost all my friends and stuff during my breakup and honestly for a while I did not like those people I was like I felt like I'm not growing I feel like I'm stuck I hate this I hate being around these people and if it wasn't for the breakup I probably would have kept being around those people that I hated being around that I felt like I wasn't growing honestly and like maybe the one of the last times I hung out with those people right they were like <laughs> are you like it was fourth of July yeah it was fourth of July they came over because my ex invited them over to our apartment and like we broke up in oh by the way we broke up in April and this is fourth of July so like it, it was a few months by then right I <laughs> uh they were like so are you still working at that like little cafe job and I'm like yeah it's fun it's cute I'm, I still work there I still work at church Nary. but like I really do enjoy working at church Nary. it's like a good job and like it's I love the company and they were kind of looking down on it that like I wanted to 
be like because i was a hostess at that time too like being a hostess and it's like no i like that like literally it was night it was okay because back then my my schedule was structured it was from seven to two or seven to one and like in the morning and so because of that i wasn't drinking as much and it was from monday to friday so then the weekends i would i <laughs> addict stuff uh, i made rules addicts make rules for themselves and that's very much i guess i'm talking i right and so i would i remember last year i was like i'm not gonna drink when i have work days i have work because i don't want to miss work or i don't want to fuck up and so i didn't i didn't drink at all on work days for a while and then one weekend like on friday i was very like on friday, i was really really sad and i was like i had a whole bottle of whiskey by myself and it was when i was still going to therapy and i can't it's because i could stop being able to afford therapy that's why i stopped going i should go back to therapy but when i was in therapy like when i was you know i told her about it and that's like because we were talking about like, like let's try to stop and like try to like deal with our problems the right way and like i was sad and something happened i think like something happened and with my ex and like because we were like on and off at that point and like i just i i just I had a mental breakdown and i like took a whole bottle of whiskey my, my mom came over and it was a mess and like i don't want i don't like i didn't like who i was then like i didn't like the cycle and like right and i'm like I feel like a failure still, but I know looking back at who I was, even, like, in December, that I am doing better, but it's hard to feel like you're doing better when, like, like, I'm healing. Healing is hard. Healing is not an easy thing, and I think that, like, yeah, I don't know, like, and I know some people, I don't know, like, when people say that going out is childish, I kind of understand what they're saying, because I still like the idea of going out, I still think it could be fun. But because you're not working on yourself or like some people are, but like a lot of times you're not working on yourself when you're partying every single day. Like I would go out every fucking day, <laughs> like the last like for like, let's say two years straight, every single day almost I would go out, I would drink, I would have, I would party and um, it stops being fun. It stops. A party's just a party. <laughs> I'm quoting Miley Cyrus. I love Miley, but like. Sometimes, like, a party stops being party. Partying stops being... It just becomes your everyday life. And when it becomes your everyday life, it's not that fun. Like, and when you're seeing those same people every single day... And also, it's, like, the girl that judged me for, like, working on Dark Dinner and, like, enjoying it, like... It's, we're doing, you're doing the same thing every single day. Like, I... And I guess, I guess, like, you know, a job is, like, doing something every single day. But that's what I like about the service industry is, like, it feels like it's not the same thing every single day. And maybe it's, like, gaslighting. But, like, you're meeting new guests and, like, you're doing new things. And, like, for... And I know some people do look down on the service industry and servers. But, honestly, I personally fucking love the service industry because it's always fucking different. And, I mean, for addicts also, like, for drink, people who drink and do drugs, it is also... There's a lot <laughs> that um, happens in the service industry that, like, could be, should be discussed, but I'm, and, like, can't be focused on that's negative, but it's also just, like, you don't, there's no, it's, if you're in front of a house, it's good money, or, like, it can be good money. It's flexible hours, more or less. Like, I mean, lately, I don't feel like this, like, I feel like the service industry has changed a lot, but it's more bearable it's like a you it's no it's less well late i I feel like here's the thing a lot of the things i liked beginning the service industry and the things that like i like now are very different because i feel like the service industry has changed since covid um another thing that i say is like covid like a lot of people growth got sent it during covid because no one was going outside and so like it's kind of that's also kind of nice that like as as bad as that sounds that like i like that covid happened but because everyone was in that like i can't go outside i can't do anything thing me explaining that like i would stay at home and i didn't do much and i didn't grow much and like i would do youtube videos sometimes but like i really wasn't doing anything i was just eating and like not doing anything because like i literally if you watch my videos from a few years ago i gained a lot of weight um i was over 200 pounds at one point i <laughs> And the thing is, though, right, maybe I could help do a whole video on this, too. My most successful time was when I was over 200 pounds in 2020, when I was at my biggest, is literally when my, like, career was good and took off and I was doing great. And so, like, I don't have resentment for being bigger and then losing weight 
in some ways i mean i just i think it's just a really interesting thing because people say like if you're skinny and you look good and you do this and you do that that like people will want to watch you because that's what like influencers do and i'm like it's funny that like everything that people have told me are influencer things are like this will make you successful has not worked at all and it's always it's the things that are like me just being me or like just not caring or like just letting go that has done well like i know people are like people don't want authentic content but like i think people do like honestly um because like tiktok was such a new platform i really did not give a shit and so i like just gave myself and i feel like i on youtube because like like i've been doing youtube for like 14 years now something like that um like I wasn't showing myself at all because there was a way you're supposed to be a YouTuber. Like when I started, there was like, cause I started in 2010, like you were supposed to be a certain YouTuber and those videos are awful and they did horribly and they weren't me and they weren't, didn't show the good parts of my personality, didn't do anything and like they were bad. <laughs> but anyway, back to the point is that, yeah, like I... I, I like that COVID happened. I like that COVID got me on my shell. It helped me, like, TikTok helped me a lot. And, like, I feel like, I, like, in the growth sphere, I think that if I never started TikTok, I don't think that I would be who I am today. Because, like, also, even, like, going through, like, the whole, like, I didn't even show everything that I went through last year. But, like, a lot of the things I went through, I felt, because TikTok is more of, like, a chill platform i don't think i would have been able to talk about it here on youtube and that's why i took a break from youtube for a year because i don't think that youtube is very welcoming sometimes i don't know how to explain it like i'm not saying it's never welcoming i'm saying that it's not always <laughs> welcoming it's not the most welcoming platform and you can't be always so raw and real like you're gonna get hate comments like i'll talk about something on like youtube and people will hate like so bad but like i'll talk about the same things on like tiktok and people will be like totally i agree girly and it's like supportive i mean that's changed kind of like there's starting to be haters on tiktok a lot more but like before it was like fip love you too girly like everyone can become friends like because it was such a, like a 2020 tiktok was a mood i kind of want to talk about 2020 tic- I, that's another video okay i'm gonna write a list of things i wanted to talk about because 2020 tiktok vibes <laughs> like i honestly it was so fun like it was so fun it was so exciting and everyone was doing it and it was the best but yeah like i do think that tiktok also helped me grow and be better and like yeah i guess i guess it's the real title of this because like as i keep talking is healing in my late 20s but yeah and becoming self finding myself but it's i like i'm starting to like myself because i definitely fucking hated myself for a really long time and that's okay it's okay to hate yourself i think people also <laughs> that's sorry. i feel like if you hate yourself that means that you are may, might be a hot take you might hate me i feel like if you hate yourself that means that there's something you need to change about yourself like because if you yourself doesn't don't like those traits and like sometimes you can't change it right like i'm not gonna lie to you some things because people will be like just change it and it's like <laughs> like your voice like you can't change i mean you can't you can try to change your voice but like you know, like, your eye color or something, like, don't get surgery to get your eye color changed, because that's fucking dangerous, and you can fucking fuck up your redness, but, like, if it's something that's changeable, if it's something that you know that is, like, oh, I hate that I do, like, I don't know, like, something some way that's easy, like, maybe, like, okay, so I, like, when I write my sevens, I, like, put, like, a line in it, maybe I'm, like, one day I'm, like, I don't really like how that looked anymore, just, like, take the effort of just putting, no line in seven you know like that's really fucking dumbass example example <laughs> but like that's the thing you can do like just change things up or rev it up you know like figure it out um like it might not seem like much but if that you think that's gonna make you happy like i think that's important to try to do like do things to try to make you happy i think a lot of people kind of forget to do things to make them happy and that's also a thing which is kind of sad i because yeah i want i want like every day i'm like i'm not happy i want to be happy and like i don't know how to, here's the thing being happy is such like a arbitrary goal because it's like how the fuck do you do that but i am doing things that okay i think having a happy life is just doing things i will hit myself in the face having a happy life is just doing things happy things every single day 
and not you can't always do happy things every single day but just doing a happy thing here there like doing things that make give you joy here and there and eventually you'll have a happy life that's my theory i don't know if that's true because i'm not i'm, I'm so fucking stressed like there's so much things i want to talk about and discuss but i don't want to discuss them because honestly <laughs> I'm still going through it, and I don't want to talk about things I'm still going through because I don't know what the result of them are, and it could result badly, so my whole thing is if I do that and, like, things don't go the way I want because I talked about it online, I don't want that to be, I don't want to fuck myself over. Also, like, not everyone is here for your journey in a positive way, so sometimes, like, putting, like, I'm going through this currently out loud sometimes does not help you, like, and even the people who... I don't know, it's just a very, energies are weird, so, like, sometimes you put stuff out there, and, like, it's out there, and as someone who's happy and, like, overshares, I am learning that, like, I'm learning some things should not be shared, and that is, fuck, oh, I just hit myself in the head again, <sighs> I'm learning that some things should not be fucking shared, and that's fucking hard, but that's growing, I guess, because I don't think, I think before I would have been like, yep, I, this is, something we'll share, we need to share everything, but, yeah, like, I have, and, like, some people be like, oh, you you do still overshare, and, like, that's, it's like, that's not unsafe online. Overshare, because I thought that that, like, I just did not understand. First of all, I have no <laughs> preservation skills, um, that's a whole big problem, like, if I ever talk about some of my partying stories, or, like, my drunk stories online, which, I probably shouldn't, um, maybe, maybe when I'm, I feel more comfortable with it, maybe. I don't know, maybe not, um, <laughs> I have stories, um, and, like, now, like, even if I vlog things that are, like, my job, I don't actually, for example, so, someone left a comment the other day, and it was just, uh, probably yesterday, actually, the other day, and they were, like, are, is your job okay with you filming, and the answer is I've never asked, and here's why, <laughs> I mean, with this new job, because I have three jobs, I work as a cashier at a retail space, I work at Tartinery still, and, like, before I was a server, now I'm, like, a cashier, like, counter server, um, I'm not, that's kind of the vibe that I'm at right now, right, and then I have a third job that I really don't talk about, but I'm a server there, but it's not even, like, a regular ser server job, so I don't really consider it a server job, but, like, the position is server, if that makes sense, okay, <laughs> which, like I said, because I don't, see, no one really knows about that third job, because I don't ever talk about that third job, but, right, and then they were like, I, I've shown bits and pieces of my retail job, but I don't show the actual place, like, the, like, front of the store, I don't show, like, too much, I don't vlog too much, honestly, a lot of it, I don't really talk to the camera while I'm at work in vlog, but I might just voice over it, like, I just get clips here and there. I don't say the name of the job that I work at. Um, I only talk about Tartinery and say it's Tartinery. Because at this point, <laughs> I have posted so much about Tartinery and working at Tartinery for the last year that it makes absolutely no fucking sense to hide that I work at Tartinery at this point. <laughs> like, yes. I work at Tartinery. Like, the job that, like, I was talking about with, like, the cut hours is Tartinery. But, like, because it's very obvious. <laughs> um... But now that I'm not at that location, because I was at West Third and, like, the Greenwich Village location, I don't, I'm not going to say which location I'm at now. And, like, if you find me, great. But I'm not going to say now, because, yeah, and I don't, also, at this new location, I don't film, because I just don't. First of all, it's busier, and I don't have any time to film. And two, I just don't overshare that. Like, just, if you see me in the wild, just be like, hey, she love, but, um, I deserve some privacy, and also, like, yeah, I don't know, like, <laughs> I just don't feel like doing that anymore, which sounds interesting, I guess, I don't know, like, man, but, but yeah, like, I do, I do want to still show bits of my life, but I'm picking and choosing what bits of my life that I choose to pick and choose, like, because sometimes people will say, like, you still show so much of your life. I used to show, like, 90% of my life, and now I show maybe 1% of my life. I don't vlog much. I don't talk much about my life. And, like, now that I'm doing these videos, I probably will be sharing a little bit more about my life now as an adult more. But, like, 
I feel like for years, like for a good, like, especially last year, I didn't film anything and I've grown so much and I've become a whole different person in the last year. I kind of just dropped off the face of fucking YouTube. I was, like I said, still doing TikToks. But, and so you don't know who I am right now. And also, fun fact, just things to think about because <coughs> I got someone that got irritated at me. It this happened, okay, I've had this happen a few times in a few different scenarios. And people will say, I met you in real life. You don't seem the same. First of all, I'm very, 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 very comfortable with my camera. We have a good relationship. I've been doing this for like 10 plus years. So talking to the camera is so much more easier for me. And yes, I'm a sociable person and I do do like service work. So I, I can have a conversation. But when someone comes up to me and is like, hey, she love, I watch you on YouTube or I watch you on TikTok. I'm like, all of a sudden, I don't know what to fucking say because you know things about me that I don't know about you. And I don't know what to say. You know, I don't know what to say or what you expect. And like, they're like, well, you seem so nice in your, I've had this before where someone was like, you seem so nice in your videos and you're kind of a, seems like you might be kind of a bitch in real life. And it's like, no, I'm just fucking uncomfortable and have anxiety. <laughs> Like, you can't really see that I have anxiety. Maybe you can. I'm, like, fucking touching my hair so much in this fucking video. But you can't see as much that I have anxiety. Ow. <laughs> you can't see as much that I have anxiety through the camera. But I have a huge anxiety. I have panic attacks all the time. And, like, when I'm at work and being a server and talking, I'm, like, I feel like I'm... I mean, just... I don't explain it. I feel like a character. And so when I'm being that character, I don't feel weird or... It's, like not hard for me to talk to people but like when people expect me like me to be me i don't know who me is anymore like i just it's just like it's like when interviews when people are like <laughs> you know when people are like just tell me about yourself and all of a sudden you have no fucking details about yourself and you have no interesting discernible qualities like that's me like whenever people are like hey she love i saw you on tiktok i've seen you on tiktok oh also because lately um since i work still like i work Working in the Greenwich Village location with, like, Greenwich Village. Um, there's a lot of TikTokers that go around there. And I've met a lot of TikTokers. I'm, <laughs> as someone who does TikTok and social media themselves, it's weird to meet people you've watched or you like online or you've just watched. Because sometimes I'll be like, there was, like, a guy who came in and I'm like, with, like, a group of friends. And I'm like, I feel, I, I don't know. Maybe I met him for party. Oh, I know this man. And then, like, apparently he was a TikToker. And it was just like, oh, cool. That one was, like, kind of more just chill. They were kind of cool. But they were asking for a lot of things. And it was just like, I had to, like, literally go. <laughs> so my boyfriend was working that day. I had to be like, hey, sorry. Can you, like, do this for me or do that for me? There's, like, a bunch of drinks for this order. But, like, it wasn't that bad. They were, like, cool. And they ordered a lot. And, like, they seemed nice. So, that was great um i don't remember don't remember the name of the tiktoker but i've seen him on my free page and i met okay so this girl she like it might be very obvious who it is actually if i talk about it but this girl used to live in korea and i used to watch her videos where she lived in korea she's a white girl who lived in korea and then she moved to new york and i think she goes to like parsons or new school or something and like she came into my retail job because it also has food right and it felt like I felt like I was being so awkward because like I watched her TikTok I for a long time I watched her TikToks and her YouTube videos and stuff like that. I've been following her for like a few years. And so seeing her in real life, she was really cute. She was really pretty in real life. And she was on the phone like the whole time, which is very fun. Like you can be on the phone. I'm not judging you, you're not bad. It's like this is I've been wanting to tell the story. I just had nowhere to put it. Um so she was just on the phone and stuff and like it wasn't like a bad interaction whatsoever, but it was just so weird because I was like I wanted to be like, Hey, I watch your videos, I love your videos well, one, she was on the phone. That felt weird. And two, it felt like that that was the moment I'm like, I do have parasocial relationships with people. I just don't kind of think about it because that was a parasocial thing. That was so awkward. Like, to be like, I'm just staring at her. She's probably like, why is this girl staring at me? But yeah. And she has definitely more followers and stuff than me. So she's like, yeah. <laughs> but she was nice. I mean, like, she was normal. Like, I wouldn't say she was nice. Because sometimes I think as a server, people aren't. You, you spend more time with people on the server than you do as a cashier so it was a normal interaction like it wasn't amazing it wasn't it wasn't good it wasn't bad it was just there she got a pork bun <laughs> like it was it like it wasn't much but it was just a weird experience for me because i was like this is the first time seeing someone actually watch you know what i mean like an actual tick like because i've just, i know people do tiktok and stuff but like this was someone i actually watched you know they were actually a real life person that does real life things like eat and do things and like not film 
all the time and that made me feel weird so like that's why i'm like oh that's probably how people feel watching me sometimes because that's fucking weird it's weird it's so weird to be like oh my god you're you're a person who pees and poops and shits and like they just a pee poop shit it's, you know what i mean they do shit they do and they're alive and i know like i said i know that sounds weird to be like oh my god you're alive you're a person but like it's easy to forget that people are people online because you're on a screen you know like you're for entertainment it's not tv but like your brain might think of it as someone being like tv show characters it's so fucking weird just that <laughs> but you know i don't know how i got into the conversation of tiktokers but i, I can talk i can i can talk about tiktok forever <laughs> oh i am getting more comfortable i feel like my voice went away more <laughs> um so i am getting more comfortable with this format and doing this and it's like exciting and fun and i like it and also we're at like 30 something minutes before we're at 20 and i want to be able to do like hour-long podcasts but i feel like right now i just have to get comfortable with doing it so i'm very very excited i'm excited i'm excited i like i said if you have any topics or anything you want me to talk about maybe let me know because i do have thoughts and feelings but also just like I, and like i said give me a topic a, sh- a girl can yeah a girl likes to yeah but yeah i guess i'm gonna i think <laughs> now that we're at the end of the podcast i think i'm gonna name this like healing in your late 20s because that is the vibe um is that the whole thing we talked about absolutely fucking not but yeah there's a lot, see because here's the thing i have so much things i want to talk about like i wanted to talk about failing in my late 20s but like this I think I I am healing, I'm failing, I'm doing a lot of things in my late 20s. So, I think it's all hitting me at once. And so, because of that, I'm, I'm allowing it. I'm allowing it. Also, when I do these, when I, I don't plan these out, I just talk to the camera and just yap, yap, yap. I don't know what's going to be. <laughs> like I, I do want, like I said, I want to do ones that are more planned and more, like, concrete and stuff like that. But right now, this is okay. Like, I'm chilling. We're, like, we're, we're literally a week ahead. So because i filmed like two in less than 24 hours because i really wanted to film the next one so i'm gonna try to stay ahead on these so that like every week you do get a video but yeah um i think they're gonna be up every tuesday at like 12 ish and then i might do a vlog once a week too so i might do to start doing two videos a week but we don't know yet we are gonna see we're gonna we're gonna feel it we're gonna we're gonna try i'm gonna try to film these at least twice a month twice a month like film yeah like film do filming days and like i don't know maybe i don't know i'm i'm still deciding i don't know what i want to do or how i'm gonna set this up yet i why am i lying to myself as if i have not been in a consistent youtube schedule for like a year so i don't over a year so i don't even know how to be a youtuber anymore who like consistently uploads but i'm very proud of myself for doing two recording two and i'm in like I'm ready to s- schedule it and stuff, so we're, mm, um, yeah. <coughs> I have to leave in, like, 30 minutes for work, so I'm just gonna cut this off. I probably won't edit this until tomorrow or something, but I have a week to edit it, so I'll talk to you guys in the next one. I hope you guys enjoyed this one, and I'll talk to you guys next week. Bye!